Casanova by Gabriel Bar and Fabio Moon, written by Matt Fraction, is a unique beast of a comic. It's pretentious and playfully careless at the same time. It's unscrupulously pretentious. In naming each of these books after one of the deadly sins, and not just that, but in Latin. So the first one is called Luxuria, Voluptuousness, or Lust in short. The second Gula, which means gluttony. And the third one, Avaritia, Avarice. And above all that, the first three books form a trilogy. Therefore, you can stop reading Casanova after the third book if you're so inclined, but who will want to stop anyhow? So, I think all the allegedly pretentiousness aside, the deadly sins concept is a good sign because there are seven of them. Seven deadly sins. So, there will be probably four more Casanova books in the future. One of these is already one on its way via floppies and soft covers. It's called Negligence, um, sorry, Acedia. In contrast to this rigid and ambitious frame, the story is wonderfully lighthearted. Due to the chaotic, innovative and experimental story writing of Matt Fraction, and the more so due to the incredible fun art of Gabriel Barr and Fabio Moon, who take turns with the artwork. They give the comic a distinct European feel and Brazilian samba power as well, even if this sounds cliche and the, if there's one thing that this comic is not, it's being cliche. Even if there are a lot of familiar espionage tropes involved and some stuff really cries James Bond with time travel and some robots maybe, but on the other hand, the time travel stuff shuffles everything until all looks pretty fresh, perplexing and exciting. On a side note, I did like Fabio Moon's art a tad more. It's a bit looser than Bar's art, which tends to be a bit too strict in its freaky formula, freaky formula sometimes. But that's really complaining on a very, 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 very high level. Interestingly enough, Moon was the one of the twin brothers Matt Fraction initially had in his mind for Casanova. But Moon wasn't available at that time. He drew Umbrella Academy. So Gabriel Barr started with the first part of the series and Moon took over for the second part. So it's a book drawn by twins about twins, because there are actually two main protagonists in the center of the story. Casanova Quinn, who looks a bit like the young Mick Jagger, and Sephir Quinn, Quinn, his sister. Both share a difficult relationship with their father and sometimes with each other which is not really actual incest, because they stem from different parallel universes, at least sometimes, or maybe Casanova is Sephir or vice versa. Hmm. Question mark, question mark, question mark. At some points, the comic will leave you a bit clueless, but it's always so intriguing that you won't stop reading until you forget your questions and new questions appear. Some of these questions will be answered, mind you, maybe on the second read through. But I have the suspicion that some dangling narrative threads are just that dangling and forgotten narrative threads. Matt Fraction throws his colorful cast, among them wonderful villains and very human androids, into his different timelines and sees who and what sticks. Although he plots quite cleverly some consistent threads with well thought out twists and turns, he's nevertheless over his head a lot, having almost too many ideas at the same time and pop cultural and autobiographic autobiographic references and whatnot. 
Having read a lot of his very chatty and wordy back matter annotations, I got the impression that I actually never would want to read a real prose novel, real in quotes, prose novel from Matt Fraction. He just doesn't know where to stop. But fortunately, a comic isn't told by the writer, but ultimately by the artist, and Bar and Moon seem to be much more organized and structured. So all the overflowing and sparkling fraction craziness is condensed and filtered in the team working process. Thinking of it, maybe a similar win-win situation was the reason for the wonderful Hawkeye run in which Fraction worked together with David Aja for the most part, who, judging by his art, is a very organized and structured storyteller in his own right. Anyway, the characters are fleshed out very well and they interact in believable ways, so there's not just the over-the-top time travel, sci-fi, espionage and all that fun stuff, but a lot of quieter moments. For an instance, there's one page after the death of one Robert woman in which Casanova's sidekick explains his wish that she should not be repaired but buried because he loved her the way she was and a repair wouldn't retrieve the essence of her as she was. For me, that monologue has a similar punch as the legendary sequence in Blade Runner, where Decker tells uh, the android Rachel that her memory was programmed. A review of Casanova wouldn't be complete without mentioning that it has real hand lettering. The way it was done is explained in the bad mecha <laughs> back matter section of volume one and of course the gorgeous coloring from Chris Peter. Originally in its first published form Casanova was just colored in duotone. Each story arc has its own color Luxur uh, Luxuria green and Gula blue and so on. I guess that was a gorgeous coloring solution and maybe even superior to the version right here but I don't know, it's brilliant all the same. And keeping a bit of the original color scheme in using that Luxuria green a lot for the first volume and blue for the second and red for the third. Gabriel Barr gave Chris Peter a color scheme of 45 colors with the order just to use these colors and nothing more. He writes that he still feels it's too colorful, but again, that's complaining on a very, very, very high level, because on mere eye level, Casanova, all in all, is a crazy, good, beautiful, insanely well-made comic. Thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.